So it's another beautiful day in the desert. And I'm going to show you how I went ahead and set up this aquarium for my uh, albino crebensis babies, or juveniles, I guess now. And this will be their grow out tank until they're of a sellable size. The albino crebensis, I am going to give them their own grow out tank. Their siblings ended up in their own tank. These are them, the little species looking curbensis that came from albino parents. This albino female is not one of the parents. This is the 29 gallon I got, and this is the tank I'm gonna use for their grow out tank. And so I started, I washed a bunch of uh, cracked lava, got a big bag of it from Home Depot, and I'll put that down first. Supposedly it's a great, uh, part of a substrate to hold beneficial bacteria once it gets established because of all the porousness that the lava contains. So the next step is to add some, some of this gravel, also from Home Depot. And I've washed it because it's pretty dirty. It's really inexpensive though, so it's a good addition to the substrate. That should be enough. And then I'm gonna pull the gravel back off the edges. Just a little bit, so I don't, don't really want to see it. That humming you probably hear is uh, the mini split air conditioner. Garage door's open, so it's working full tilt right now. And then after this, I've got what's left of a bag of play sand, also from the home center. And I'm gonna pour that in along the edges first. Kind of keep the gravel from working its way, working its way forward. And that's the end of the place sand. So I gotta get another bag of that. So I'm using up a lot of tail ends. I got another bag of a, a finer gravel from Pet Smart. I'm just gonna sprinkle that over the top. If I had more, I would use more. I'd like to have about an inch of this. maybe an inch and a half or two. So I think what I'm gonna do is wash some more of that other gravel that I put on top of the lava and just finish it off with that. So I washed off a bunch more of this gravel. It's not bad, the price is right. That's the nice thing about the, you know, the play sand in this gravel from the home centers. Unless you need really expensive stuff, there's nothing wrong with this at all. So I'm gonna cap this these layers with this gravel and hopefully I washed enough and if I didn't I still got a little bit more of that left and then on top of this I'm just gonna put a, just a lot of big round uh, or smooth river type stones and that should be that should be more than enough. And then I'll throw in plants. And I'll bring plants in from other aquariums. And I will bring in uh, water from the aquarium that the baby crevences are going to be coming from. So that means that uh, I should have lots of uh, beneficial bacteria already involved in this, in this tank. And I also have a uh, larger sponge filter that's been working in the tank that uh, the baby crebensis is currently in. 
and that should bring more beneficial bacteria. And just for good measures, I will dose the tank after I get the fish in with some API quick start. And in case you're wondering, no, this is not an API sponsored video. video. I like their products. I first uh, learned about their products watching MD fish tanks on YouTube. That's what he uses. Yeah, so it's good enough for him. I figured, well, why not? It should be good enough for me. All right. So this is the last scoop I got. So I probably only have maybe average a half an inch of this gravel from a uh, the home center. And now I'm going to put some rocks on top of it. These are a bunch of rocks. We have a this rock mulch, if you want to call it that, in our backyard here in the desert. And I'm going to just layer this stuff up and uh, hopefully not too regular. And that way the fish will have places to swim in and out. Eventually, I'll throw, once some mulm starts settling on the bottom of the tank, after feeding it and after some plant breakdown, I'll throw maybe half a dozen quarries in here if I can find something different. I like quarries a lot. I think I've got six different species. I've got albino quarries. I've got peppered quarries. I've got... Um, false Julie quarries and uh, let's see what else uh, stir by quarries and some bronze quarries I think that's it somebody will count that and tell me if I'm missing one Eventually, I'm going to do a tank like this, just gra or just rocks, uh, and uh, I saw it watching a keeping sim uh, at keeping fish simple video with Nick, where he was raising uh, reticulated hill stream loaches, and those are something I want to get, and I want to give that a shot. And apparently, they like spawning in rock piles. They're, they're a river fish, so probably a fairly swift water fish. But the fry, I think they lay their eggs down in the rocks, and the fry will uh, be safe down in the rocks, and I think they're probably one of the fish that does not eat their fry. So I'm gonna set up another tank for that pair of uh, uh, albino curbensis. Of course, I don't know how many albino curbensis babies people really need. At some point, you know, it's, it's gonna get a little silly. And I probably need to stop raising those and let these, let the ones I have mature. I have a piece of manzanita wood I might throw in here too. I don't know if that's going to work or not. I did a, a quick video on this. It was full of uh, maybe termite holes. So. Uh, how to get rid of termite holes. You can go back and check my other videos on how to get rid of insects in uh, uh, in, in your driftwood so that you, they don't end up in your house or in your garage or anywhere else. So I bought this piece of wood from a local fish store and it came that way and uh, nothing he could do about it. He bought it from somebody else uh, but fortunately I know what to do about it so I took care of that. And I've got more rocks that I want to add. I've also got the better part of a bag of these river pebbles from the home center. People use them in landscaping all the time, too.
Well, anything worth doing is worth overdoing, I guess. But I think we'll let that go. A couple more back here. really necessary. You know what? I need some room to put that sponge filter too. So I think that may be it. And then what I'm going to do is drop a bunch of botanicals in it, a bunch of uh, a bunch of leaf litter, and I got a lot of twigs that I'll drop those in and kind of maybe that'll be more of a like a rivery uh, looking scene. So you guys had the end view the whole time. So let's see what the side view looks like. Coming around the corner, and like that. If I'd have had some bigger chunks of wood, I might have been thinking about that initially, but all I have is that one piece of manzanita, so I'm just going to let that go here and just put, like I said, the botanicals and a uh, bunch of leaf litter. I just, you know, I, I find leaves out in the yard uh, that seem appropriate, and uh, I wash them off with hot water. I don't bother to boil them or anything. I just wash them off with hot water and drop them in. They eventually hydrate enough that they sink. I've got a little Java fern I glued to a pebble and uh, stuck it in this hole in this chunk of lava rock. This thing weighs like 40 pounds, it's huge. And then I just piled up a bunch of rocks in here too and a big sponge filter. So this is ideally gonna be the same kind of a setup. Rocks, crevensis, botanicals and, and then like I said anything worth doing is worth overdoing so I've got this extra gravel so I dropped a little bit of that around the edges down here and some landed up in the rocks and there's a bunch along the front here so anyway I don't know if it makes it look more natural or, or more contrived but you know what? it really doesn't matter it's all in good fun so I just pulled about 10 gallons of water out of this tank and it's going to go in the tank we just set up. And you can see there's there's plenty of tannins, well there's tannins in the water and I'll probably add some more with uh, leaf litter and stems. And I'm using this little bitty submersible pump and I put a uh, pre-filter on the end of it. I used the pre-filter at the other end when I was sucking the water out so I didn't suck fish out. I, so now I'm just using it as a diffuser and I don't even know if I really need to in this tank. So let's take it off and see what kind of flow we got. Yeah, I think we can probably do away with it here. We'll save it for later. And so this is going to take a bit. But I'm, I'm using existing tank water from the, the tank that the fish are coming from. And I've got a sponge filter that'll go in this corner from the tank that the fish are coming from. And I will grab plants from that same tank and stick some of those in here. Maybe some of that dwarf Sagittaria. And there's some Valcinaria in the back of that tank that might still be alive. That tank doesn't get enough light, so the valve doesn't do real well. I think it's the jungle valve back there. It's just not doing real well. I've got some in another tank that's doing a lot better, more light. Um, and I'll probably drag an Anubius and a Java Fern over here. And then as time goes on, I'll just get more plants. Uh, I want to do another tank. There's a guy on Amazon that sells crypts for pots of crypts. And they're full pots. So I think it's $6.95 and in about 9 bucks shipping. But I bought, God, what did I buy? Three pots? Same amount of shipping. So I would definitely go find that guy. I'm going to go find him and get a, several pots uh, and divide them up and spread them out in, a, in kind of a sandy bottom tank with a lot of light. And I'll find something to put in there, some sort of a, either a grow out tank or a, um, just another, another breeder tank maybe, or I don't know, maybe just a show tank. Doing it this way, there's, there's not much room here. There's just barely, you know, I don't know what's that, about five inches across the top here. So trying to lift a five gallon bucket in there, this, that little, even though it's a little bitty submersible, that really is doing the job. And we're already half empty and I shut this, uh, shut the camera off for just, God, I don't know, maybe like 30 seconds. So it's working really well. Uh, and then when this bucket's gone, I will put in this bucket. And then when that bucket is empty, that'll be about 10 gallons. And this is a 29 gallon tank. 
So I'll put the other 20 gallons out of this bucket of water that's been sitting here. Uh, because it's been sitting for so long, the chlorine gas is off. The chloramines do not. So I will add some uh, API tap water conditioner to that. Once again, uh, not a sponsored video. I just like using API. It works well for me. Use what works best for you, and that's all I will ever say. You know, just use what you like and what works best for you. So here comes that sponge filter I was telling you about. Let's see if I can pry it out of here. Let's turn it off first. And one handed. It's never good that way. Let it drain a little bit. I've got this handy colander that I use to pour the water into the tank. So that's it. That'll go into the new tank. That's where it sits. And I'll plug it in in just a bit. So now I've refilled this tank as well. So this one's all set, ready to go. I'll pull some plants out. So now to finish topping off the tank, it's about half full. I just moved over that 20 gallon trash can full of water and drop the pump in that. And when this is full, I'll, uh, I'll add some of that tap water conditioner because this has not been treated, as you recall. And then I will start moving everything over and I gotta hook up that air pump and this tank will be ready for little fishies. All right, so I put the sponge filter in place and it's tied to the pump. And I modified this using an air stone so it makes the bubbles finer. You get more of a finer finer diffusion, I guess, of the bubbles through the uptake tube. And I've got another video on how I modify these, and I got that from Corey from Aquarium Co-op, so it's not an original idea, but it's more recent, and it's all the same thing he talks about. So you can go find his, or you can backtrack and find mine. Well, there it is all filled. And I dropped a few plants in. I've got an Anubius on a stick from that other tank and another little Anubius that was attached to a rock, a uh, java fern attached to a rock, another piece of java fern that was still attached to the, a dead frond. So I just pulled that off and stuck it under a rock and hold it in place. And right there is a piece of that jungle val that I will plant into the substrate, probably right about there. Uh, next to uh, the sponge filter and then I've got a bunch of leaves that I grabbed these are off of an anthurium one of the flowering house plants you may be familiar with we've got one on the front porch and it just got battered in the heat and uh, so there's a bunch of dead leaves on it so I'm using them here I rinsed them off in really hot water and that usually works well enough and then I've also got these these brachychiton poplineus or kerjong bottle leaves it's an Australian tree um, and they'll eventually settle out. There's a couple of them that are already settling out, but they'll settle out. They'll settle out and settle to the bottom. And that gives the fish something to swim around and kind of hide in. And, and it also helps add in some uh, beneficial tannins to the water, which are good. And I could add some Indian almond leaves. I've got the small ones, and that'll darken the tank like tea. But those tannins are, uh, are beneficial. They act as an antimicrobial, help kill any kind of bacteria or fungus that's not good. Uh, so I don't know, I may or may not do that. We shall see, but that'll change the whole face of this tank. It'll be super dark water for a while, and that's okay. And then I've got some of that uh, hornwort I'm gonna add in here just cause I've got, I'm gonna grab it from another tank. Uh, all my tanks are pretty much the same. They're all pretty, pretty safe. So I'm confident that I can take uh, I can take plants from one tank and move them to the next. So I'm also gonna pull out some of that uh, dwarf Sagittarius, I think again, and I think that's what it is. And I'll plant three or four pieces in the front here. And once that stuff gets established, it'll spread and it'll cover the whole bottom of the tank at this end. And I like it, I like the look, and it'll even pop up through the rocks. Um, so anyway, that's kind of where we are right now. All right, well, that's it. I just put some CO2 boost and some leaf zone in here also. And I don't know if any of you noticed, but it dawned on me after I, all this, I forgot to put any uh, aquatic pond soil down below uh, on top of uh, just a really thin layer on top of the volcanic, uh, that crushed volcanic rock. It adds a 
you know, layer of nutrients for the plants. Uh, eventually, it'll balance out because of fish poop and, uh, you know, adding the leaf zone and the, um, the uh, CO2 boost, that'll help it as well. So they should do all right. So I've got the, the Valcinaria all the way in the back there. It's hard to see, but it's back there. And those dwarf Sagittarius, I think that, again, I should look one of these days. Uh, maybe I'll try and straighten it out on the video here. And I had a little crypt that I took out of uh, that one tank. And then I also found a little uh, uh, Wendy Love Java Fern. And then there's a couple Anubias in here. I think they're the Barteri uh, and ja the regular traditional Java Fern there and there. Um, and I put some of that uh, Hornwort against the back. I put three pieces of that against the back. And if I can come up with more plants out of another tank, I will just to fill it out some more. And maybe I'll just pull up some more hornwort out of another tank and just let it float in here as well. But I've got uh, duckweed in one of those tanks with the hornwort, and I cannot stand that stuff. My opinion, I know some people love it, uh, but as far as I'm concerned, it is an invasive weed. Regardless, I don't want to get that in this tank. I've got it pretty much cleared up in my other tanks. Uh, feel free to comment. Let me know what you think. And I will keep posting. I try to do as many of these... Uh, kind of how-tos because a lot of this is how I learned how to do it was watching you know some really good how-tos on YouTube and hopes hopefully someday my uh how-tos will get to be pretty good so anyway so thanks for watching um do me a favor give me a like and a subscribe please if you got anything out of this video